Shalom, Mosiah, and Christ bless. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Gideon, and my reader is Officer Bezalel. Um, today, the name of the topic is Saved by the Blood of the Lamb. Saved by the Blood of the Lamb. We hear that statement all the time in the Christian churches. I am saved by the blood of Jesus, saved by the blood of the Lamb. So let's go into the scriptures and see, are they really saved by the blood of the Lamb? Read uh, Romans 5, verse 8. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So yes, it is true. Christ came and died for us because God loves us so much. Okay, read. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So many people in the Christianity church say Christ died, we are saved through his blood. Yes, Christ's blood does save us, but what that means, like, we, you got to do precept upon precept to understand what that's talking about. So you're trying to tell me, Jesus died, there's nothing I need to do, and I just keep living foul, and then I'm going to make it to the kingdom, because I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. No. Let's keep reading. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. When we were living foul, when you read Colossians 3.21, we were alienated from God. But Christ came, what? Who was alienated? The northern kingdom. Christ came to reunite, what? Northern kingdom and southern kingdom. So all of us can have a chance to be saved. Read. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So Christ's death is an atonement. For what? For us who were alienated from the from the from the from the word of God. You had northern kingdom, you had southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was alienated. We did not deal with them. And in in modern day, we are all Gentiles. We're coming from a Gentile state of mind. So as it stands right now, we are alienated from the from, from, from the law. So to the blood of Christ, we we're able to come back because there's certain sins you cannot come back from before Christ died for us. So the blood is very important, but let's go a little bit deeper. Read. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Read. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. So this is where Christianity fall off the horse. They say, well, there's no more law, so there's no more sins. Um, that's not what this is going about. What is that going into? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Because before you read, it says, um, For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So people are saying that Christ came and done away with the law. There's five categories of laws. You got civil, moral, sacrificial, dietary, right? And ceremonial. So those five categories of laws... When you read verse 13, which law is talking about? Hebrews 10 and 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats shall take away sins. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and, and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. You see that, people? The Most High did not want any more sacrifices, so he sent his son to die as the sacrificial lamb. To do away with what law? The sacrificial law. So the moral law still stand. The civil laws still stand. The ceremonial law still stand. The dietary law still stand. Because you're not going to find in the scriptures that another scripture that tells you any of those laws I just repeated are done away with. Only the sacrificial, because Christ became the sacrificial lamb. As the atonement for sins but we still must keep the moral law and civil law because if those laws are done away with then I could rob and steal any anything I want and this is what how Christianity is living people are in the church doing all kind of vileness talking about I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb just get on my knees and pray Jesus and then I'm saved no that would be a joke Christ give you grace but remember grace is what a period of time to get yourself right. When you read, uh, read Titus 
the grace of God does save us, but guess what? It's teaching us something. So when you ask for a grace period in dealing with anything, you're asking for a time to get yourself right, not for a time to do all kind of uh, mess up things and talking about you are saved by the grace. No. At the end of the grace period, payment is going to be required of you. Okay? Give me First John chapter 3, verse 4. The understanding of Christianity is skewed when it comes to, the, to, to understanding the Bible. Read. The book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. I thought Christianity said the law is done away with. Where there's no law, there's no sin. You do not understand the Bible. The law that is done away with is sacrificial law. The Bible clearly says, and the Bible does not contradict itself. You lack the understanding of the Bible. That's the only thing that happens. Because right here it tells you what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. So you still got your moral law. You still got your civil law. You still got your dietary law, which I know Christianity is breaking like, like on every Sunday with your pork and your, all your shellfish or whatnot. The ceremonial laws, all the feast days, you're not keeping them. Talking about there's no law. You do not understand the Bible because the Bible, read that again. Maybe, maybe you're reading it wrong. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. So when you commit sin, you transgress the law. But you say you are saved by grace under the blood of the Lamb. So let's see if you are supposed to keep sinning. Give me John 8, verse 11. John 8, verse 11. Come on now. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. What Christ said to her? Go and sin no more. Jesus said, Go and sin no more. Hold up. But if she's saved by the blood of the Lamb, that means she could go and sin all you want. It says, go and sin no more. So yes, Christ make an atonement for you, but you're not supposed to stay in sin. What is sin? Violation of the law. So when he says, go and sin no more, what is he telling you? Stop breaking my laws. So that way, when the Lord, when he returns, he could have mercy on you. Okay? Give me, uh, um, how do you say, Galatians 5. Verse 13. Book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So we have been called unto liberty, right? We are free from the law of sacrifice through the blood of Christ. But it says, only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. People keep saying they're saved by the blood of the Lamb and then continue in sin. That's what Romans says, uh, shall we continue in, 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 uh, in sin because we are under grace? God forbid. We can't continue in sin. It can't keep breaking God's law talking about you saved by the blood of the Lamb. That's not scriptural. But it says what? But by love serve one another. By love serve one another. Give me 2 John 6. If we're supposed, it says don't use your liberty... Don't use that grace as a reason to, to make the flesh sin, but by love serve one another. What is love? 2 John 6. The book of 2 John, verse 6. And this is love. And this is what? And this is love. Let's see what the Bible says love is. Because we're supposed to serve each other in love, right? Read. That we walk after his commandments. What? That we walk after his commandments. This is love. That we walk after his commandments. Read. That. As you have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So the commandments we have been hearing from the very beginning, we're supposed to walk in it. We don't rob, we don't steal, we don't kill, we don't commit adultery, we don't commit fornication. You follow? We don't do any sort of abomination. We don't eat unlawful food. So we have to live in love. That is love. Rebuking one another. How can I rebuke you if there's no law? This is why the Christian, Christianity is the way it is today. 
all kind of violence going on in the church. Give me John 5, uh, verse 13 and 14. Book of John, chapter 5, verse 13. And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed him himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon unto thee. So after Christ healed this man, he found him in the temple and said to him what? Sin no more. The same thing he said to the lady that was caught in adultery. Sin no more. Here's the key point. Lest a worse thing happens to you. So if you want to stay in your sins, talking about you are saved by the blood of the Lamb, a worse thing going to happen to you. You got to stop sinning. That's what Christ says. If the man was saved by the blood of the Lamb, why would he have to tell him sin no more lest a worse thing happen unto you? He would have said, live your life the way you want, just like Christianity is doing. You were saved by the blood of the Lamb. But no, Christ says sin no more lest a worse thing happen unto you. Uh, give me 2nd Ezra 16. Because Christianity is teaching garbage. Yes, Christ, it was a necessity that Christ did die for us. But faith without work is dead. What is the work? You got to do what the law says. Having fringes on your clothes, that's a law. Keep the Sabbath day holy, that's a law. Don't hate your brother in your heart, but rebuke him. That's a law which Christianity is not teaching. Uh, 2 Ezra 16, verse 6, start at 63. 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions, and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin, and would hide their sin. So you here you are sinning, and you're hiding your sin. Because you say by the blood of the Lamb, so you ain't got to confess your sin, you ain't got to do nothing, right? No. God knows your invention, he knows what's in your heart. Read. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. When Christ returns, he's going to put all men who's breaking his laws to shame. Because you must have faith in Christ and abiding in the law, statutes, and commandments. That's what makes you a righteous man. Read. And when your sins are brought forth. When what is brought forth? And when your sins are brought but forth. But I was saved by the blood of the Lamb. And when your sins are brought forth. When your sins are brought forth. Your sins will be brought forth. What is sin? Breaking of God's laws. Read. You shall be ashamed before men. You're going to be ashamed because guess what? You always thought it was okay to keep doing the things that you're doing. You're going to be ashamed. Read. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. No, uh, uh, Captain Gideon is going to accuse you on that day. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. On that day, your sins going to accuse you. And you're going to be ashamed. Why? Because you despise God's laws. Read. What will ye do? Or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? You can't. God sees everything. So you only playing with yourself. You're playing with fire, basically. And you're going to burn. Read. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever. That's not the same thing Christ told the lady? Live off your sins. Don't sin no more. That same thing he said to the man. Lest a worse thing happen to you. Read. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So if you don't live off your sin sins, God is not going to deliver you from all troubles. Yes, you have faith in Christ. But are you keeping his laws? Are you doing the things that he said to do? Okay? Give me 2nd Ezra 9-11. Book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty. Them that hate my laws, while they had liberty, while they were under grace. They had a chance to love God's laws, but they hate God's laws. Talking about I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. Read. And when ye went as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So when we come and bring these classes to help you, you hate us for it instead. You despise us. But remember, he that despises it, despises it not men, but God. Because what we're teaching you is not our own word. It's in the Bible. The book collecting dust on your shelf. 
Read. The same must know it after death by pain. You're going to know it after death by pain. Because why? You despise God's laws. So we're going to end it like this. We're going to tell you straight up. Keep God's laws. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.